Side Hustle Show 69, how to build your own private blog network and get to the top of Google. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. And now your host, Nick Loper. Hey everybody, Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show. In this episode, you will learn the step-by-step process on how to build your own private blog network, which in 2014 is the most effective way to rank niche sites and uh, and begin earning a passive income from them. Now, of course, there's uh, some work up front, but we are Side Hustle Nation. We're not afraid of work. We just want to make sure that we channel that work in the most effective way. And I think this SEO strategy definitely qualifies. Now, since this is a uh, medium advanced tactic, I'm bringing on Doug Cunnington, a seasoned expert in building PBNs, private blog networks, to share the goods. You can find a free downloadable PDF of all the highlights and takeaways from the call at sidehustlenation.com slash episode 69 or to 69, or if you link look for the link in the, uh, in the show description uh, of your podcast player app. All right, ready? Let's get Doug on the line. Hey, Doug, welcome to the Side Hustle Show. Hey, Nick, thanks a lot for having me. I'm a huge fan of the show, so it's really quite a pleasure to speak with you today. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to have you on. So everybody, Doug is a uh, project management professional by day and a niche site SEO expert by night. So he runs nichesiteproject.com and has been featured on some of the biggest blogs in the space, including Niche Pursuits, Matthew Woodward, and Authority Website Income. Now, today, we're going to be learning about building your own private blog network, which is um, what I'm told is the, you know, one of the latest and greatest uh, SEO hacks in terms of what's working to get a site ranking in Google quickly. So we're going to learn what it is, why it's important, how to get it done the right way. Doug has got a premium course on this subject, but he's sharing some. He's offered to share some inside tips with us today for free. And Doug actually used these exact strategies to sell a niche site of his for over ten thousand dollars, so so listen up, Doug. Where where do we start? Uh, what's uh, what's a private blog network? A PBN. Well, uh, yeah, good thing to define what it is right away. So a private blog network is essentially just a network of websites that is, in most cases, made up from expired domains, and these expired domains have some authority that Google looks favorably upon. So. In in the 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 bottom line is you'll be able to build backlinks from these domains to your own money sites. Okay, so these are not sites you're you're selling anything on. They're just um, expired. Like okay, we'll we'll get into that stuff. Um, so it's a collection of of websites, typically five, ten. How many are we talking? Right. Yeah. Uh, I like to recommend if you're just starting out to focus on five, um, there's enough moving pieces where if you if you try and build a larger network than that, it gets a little bit overwhelming. So five to ten is a great place to start. OK. Now, so these are expired. Like, how do they carry over the their domain authority? Like, it seems like if somebody's going to let their domain expire, then it would kind of like die. But Google, Google says, hey, this is still a valuable site or it carries through some of their, the page rank that it used to have. Exactly. The reason why is uh, imagine some websites from, say, 2007 and maybe their uh, awards for a, a particular niche, right? So let's say website awards from 2007, some sort of design. So they, uh, on this website, have links out to all the websites that were recognized in in those awards. So maybe there's a chance that they haven't cleaned up any of these broken links because it's an old website. So the backlinks to these expired domains still exist. Thus, it passes the authority, and Google does, in fact, still recognize the authority from these expired domains. Okay, okay. So in this example, you'd be going after one of those award-winning sites from from 2007. That's... Beautiful sites from 2007. That's right, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, do they need to be related to your, your niche or not? Does that not even matter? 
it doesn't uh, it's not critical if it is related to your niche uh, usually the relevancy does have some weight and those tend to perform a little bit better however in most cases uh, it doesn't need to be related and uh, there's a method that is referred to as link injection where you simply look at the I guess the content on this expired domain in your PBN and you relate it to whatever you're trying to get a backlink to. So perhaps it's a, a real estate website of some kind okay. and you want to relate it to, say, dog training. So you can formulate some topic that's related to both of them and simply inject your link into the real estate article integrating dog training into it somewhere. Okay. Okay. Like how to dog proof your house for sale or something like that, whatever it could be. Okay. Right. Yeah. Just be creative. And most of the time you can come up with some topic to, uh, relate it. So make it somewhat connected. Okay. Where do it's so, okay. So I've got, I'm the end goal here is five to 10 high page rank sites, um, that I now own and control and, and can link out to my, my money site or whatever, whatever I'm trying to um, build my niche site. Now, is this, is it just for niche sites or can anyone benefit from this? Like, do I, should I, should I be trying to build a private blog network to improve the, the side hustle nation rankings? No, that's a key um, distinction. You typically want to do this for, um, like you said, niche sites, uh, smaller sites. I wouldn't do it for websites where your brand is valuable. So if you're doing this for client work, I would be extremely cautious and generally not recommend it. Um, for your site, Nick, I wouldn't want to have, you know, some questionable links out there to Side Hustle Nation coming from, you know, a network that's not clean. Okay. So it's, yeah, I, I would say for new websites and for niche sites that, you know, you're not building a, a large foundation on, that's what you want to target here. Okay, so it sounds like there's there's some uh, inherent uh, you know risk and reward with this uh, with this at play, you know, because didn't didn't the panda uh, you know algorithm update come through and say hey we we want to penalize all of these irrelevant links like if there's a site about real estate that's linking to something about dog training hey we'll we say hey that's irrelevant we're gonna like maybe not penalize but we're gonna like unweight those or whatever, but in this case maybe that's not that's not happening. Right. And part of it is, um, I guess, with the risk, um, because you're controlling a fairly small network, just five to 10 domains in, in a lot of cases, or at least that's what we're talking about here. It's so small in the grand scheme of things that it's pretty low risk. So the idea is to generally make these domains look as real as possible with, uh, you know, a unique header, um, an about page, some sort of a disclaimer, all the things that you would expect to see on a normal website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to all external appearances, it it looks like a normal website and it just happens to have some backlinks to your money sites. Okay. Um, That said, I mean, you know, just to get out of the way of this risk, um, the worst case scenario is the PBN would be de-indexed. So if you were really pushing the limits, which I'm not even sure, you know, what you would need to do to push the limits to be de-indexed, that is possible. So at at that point, your, you know, your time and your money that you've invested into a PBN would be gone. Yeah. And that makes sense. I think, you know, we're all kind of, uh, you know, live in fear of the next algorithm update or, you know, the, you know, the army of PhDs that Google has working, like trying to, (laughs) you know, eliminate people gaming, you know, gaming the system. But this one seems a little bit less systematic because there is there is some legwork involved in there is you know, the appearance of I mean, not even the appearance like these are legitimate sites. Maybe they have, you know, half a dozen articles and a couple of those will link to your site. Like that's not necessarily anything spammy or shady versus like, you know, blasting out links to easy articles and, you know, doing all this spinning nonsense and stuff that was going on years and years ago. So I guess, you know, risk aside, with any SEO strategy, there's going to naturally be some risk involved. But this one seems to be, and, and you know, based on my very rudimentary understanding, like because, like like you said, it's small scale, it's manual, there are, um, 
you know, maybe that's mitigated a little bit. Okay, so where do we where do we go to get started if we want to begin building our own network? Where do we go to, to find these expired domains? Okay, good good question, and I just want to I guess touch on planning this thing out. So one of the risks is. Um, I guess, just not executing on what you're planning. So it's really important when you're starting out on this endeavor to understand how big you want the PBN to be. So like we said, we'll just operate it on five to 10 domains here, the budget. So you do need to look at how much you're actually going to spend. It can get out of hand quickly. So from a project management standpoint, I'm always concerned about planning, no, that's great. Budget, that's great. yeah, but yeah. So all all these details, you kind of need to address them up front, and then once you get started, you can certainly adjust. But um, if you just you know get started down this path, a person may end up with you know a hundred domains, none of them are built out, and um, you know the whole project is a bust. Sure. So, so what do you? I guess what is what does your planning phase look like? So size. And then uh, budget, and just as a, a quick note, um, roughly uh, each domain is probably going to cost around $150 if you include all the expenses. And so that's buying the domain, taking care of hosting, getting content, and building out the site. So we could break that down later, but just to touch on that, you need to ha have some understanding of how many domains you could actually afford to build out. Um, next with the planning, um, you need to think about how much authority you want your, your domains to have. So you mentioned PR before, um, which is the Google page rank. Um, it's not looked upon as, uh, I guess with the same weight as it was before. Most people look at the Moz metrics of page authority and domain authority Okay. at this point. And then the last thing around planning that I look at is relevancy. So you mentioned it before, and that's, you know, some people really want to have all their domains relevant to their niche. Um, I don't think it's as important, so I kind of go for a blend personally. Okay. Is there a typical, is there a certain page authority or domain authority benchmark that you're looking, uh, you're looking for as like a minimum? Sure. It, it varies based on where you're at in your, you know, PBN life cycle. But um, I think to start out, it's good to get a PA over 25 or so and a DA over 15. Um, as your budget grows, your authority can grow correspondingly. Okay. I'm trying to look up like a site really quick for, for an example of what would be a uh, domain authority. Or... Sure. Let's see. So I'm just looking in opensiteexplorer.org. I don't know if there's a better tool for this. No, that's exactly um, that's exactly where you should be looking. Um, I have a a plugin for Chrome that you know pulls those kind of metrics, so um, it's pretty easy to to use that one. And you should maybe download it if you're interested in looking at, at those kind of details and metrics. Is it just the um, the Moz plugin, or is it a separate one? That's exactly right. The Moz bar. Okay. All right, so I looked up Odesk, for example. It has a domain authority of 77 and a page authority. I guess I just looked up the homepage, page authority of 76. So obviously a very well-established right. um, you know, website with a ton of a ton of backlinks and stuff. I should look up Side Hustle to see how we're doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to be like embarrassed by this. Side Hustle Nation domain authority 33, page authority 42. So awesome. This, this goes out to 100. So, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. I mean, I, I'm going to be happy to get a backlink from you someday. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. It's coming. It's coming. All right. Now, I, I sidetracked you a little bit, Nick. You were actually asking, you know, where do you get these domains? So, right, right. Once, once we, you know, once we plan and we know what we're going to be doing, um, you can go out and start looking for domains. So, you actually can look them up manually. Um, using a few different tools and it's a long process. It's fairly complicated, but the main idea behind it is you look at what a lot of people refer to as a seed URL that is maybe an older site. As I mentioned before, you know, 
Web Design Awards from 2007 as just an, as an example. And uh, sure enough, if you look at an old domain like that, there will be dead links, which are 404 errors. So uh, as I mentioned, there's a series of tools to use, which I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, this manual method, but in essence, you can look up those old 404 errors, do uh, further research and find expired domains that are uh, what, what we call free to register. So you can go to any registrar and pay the normal registration fee to obtain that uh, domain. So that's one way. Okay, so they're just sitting in in GoDaddy, for example, like open to the public, um, but but whatever. Like as soon as somebody registers it, then like all of those links become active again. Uh, basic. Well, sort of. Once once someone registers it and then puts a uh, website back on that domain that's hosted. Um, then those links are back out there. And as I mentioned before, Google does recognize those old links pointing to the expired domain. Okay, gotcha. The other way, which the preferred way for me is to go through a domain broker where they've already done this. Uh, Potentially, they've purchased these domains at an auction, which that's another area where you can get into um, as far as uh, obtaining domains. But It's much easier to go and and just buy these um, domains from domain brokers. I. (laughs) It's very labor intensive to do it the other way, like manually looking up random sites and hoping to find 404 errors. Like that sounds, that sounds like painful. It's terrible. I've I've uh, I've talked to a lot of people that have refined their methods, and it's still uh, extremely labor intensive. uh, Ties up your, you know, your computer uh, running all these uh, different processes to find these domains. So I uh, highly recommend domain brokers. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're pressed for time here. We're side hustlers. So uh, tell me about the domain broker strategy. Well, uh, luckily, it's, it's really easy. You just go to uh, a couple of these domain brokers and you can browse uh, the domains that are available. Typically, the good ones will have some of the metrics that we mentioned before, like the page authority and the domain authority, plus a few others. And you can simply shop on what your budget is. So um, that that's really all there is to it. They have them available to buy and you can pretty much buy them and start building later on that afternoon in most cases. Okay. And what's a t- so what would be an example of a domain broker? What's like the a, a website or something that you like to use for this? I will... Actually, I'm going to withhold that for now, um, and I'll I'll add it uh, later and give you the link to it. But um, just to keep them sort of private, I won't mention anyone specifically. Come on, man. <laughs> there, uh, it's it's tough to get these do- domain uh, brokers and know who who to work with. It's uh, good. So, okay, so this isn't this isn't like a like a public service because it's like everybody otherwise that would just drive the price up i guess trying to figure out what's the what's the big secret uh let me look there's one called tb solutions who's kind of a a bigger broker premium prices out there you know if you're looking to just get moving the domain coliseum and domain peel are probably the ones to go to their the prices are quite reasonable okay so, uh, so what's the typical price here for you know for buying a domain through one of these sites? In a lot of cases, you can get uh, around a hundred dollars for some of the uh, the range that I mentioned before. So, uh, a DA over fifteen, a PA over twenty five, okay. and for you know the ultra premium domains, it could be you know six, seven hundred dollars and. You know, e- even more premium domains are over a thousand to fifteen hundred. I mean, it gets uh, quite expensive for some of these really authoritative domains. Yeah, there's some uh, some investment up front here. Um, in, in, and it's funny in a site that you don't intend to ever make you any money directly. So there's you have to have a little bit of a stomach to uh, to make these investments. Right. Yeah. That's it's really hard to uh, directly put an ROI on this. Right. Okay, so what's so what's next after that? 
Okay, so once you have um, your domains, you're you're almost home free. You do need to address hosting, which you know the key thing here. This is a one risk point. You need to make sure that. Uh, all your domains are hosted on different C blocks. So it, it's a little difficult to explain um, without, uh, I guess, an illustration. But in essence, you want to make sure that your IP addresses aren't consecutive so um, or on this, hosted on the same account. So, for example, you would not want to buy a shared hosting account from Bluehost or HostGator and then put all your domains there because it's unlimited. It would be really easy to see that all those backlinks are coming from the same hosting account. So that's a bad idea. Okay, that's a red flag. Okay, exactly. So the way you want to do it is, especially with this five to 10 domain example, is to use uh, sort of the one to $2 cheap hosting. You just want to make sure that they have a one click WordPress install, which is almost standard, but not everyone has it. Do you have a favorite hosting service that will set you up with these non non sequential IP addresses? There is one that I really like, and that's called um, Host Nine. So they allow you to purchase a, a reseller account, which you know fits. It's not intended for this purpose, but it fits all the requirements. So we're looking for with independency blocks and one click WordPress install. Okay. Now yeah. that it does get a little more expensive uh, using host nine or a reseller account, unless you're, you're planning on having a, uh, a larger network, say over 15 to 20 domains. Okay. What's the monthly fee for, for that guy? About $20 a month. Oh, okay. So it's not, not outrageous, but I guess when you're comparing it with like, you know, a $5 a month hosting plan or something. Right. Exactly. Okay. So now that we've got, say, say we've been successful and we've acquired uh, half a dozen of these domains, like, or do you, or do you kind of do it one at a time and like build that site out to a point and then kind of go after the next one? Or do you try and go after, um, you know, the acquisitions first? I, I usually uh, batch it in small sizes, so about five domains. That way, I can, you know, take care of all the hosting in one day. Now, like like I mentioned before, it's it's dangerous to say plan on building out a fifteen domain PBN, and then you buy fifteen domains, and then you you don't build any of them out, and you didn't. You know, you didn't execute as you planned. Things change. So if you're just starting out, I really recommend, you know, maybe doing one or two um, and, and go start to finish. So you see the process and it will actually help your efficiency as you go along. OK, what what qualifies as built out? Like how much how much work do I have to put into this? Uh, you know, these garbage sites I don't necessarily care about. So uh, built out, I classify as having those sort of standard pages, the about page, a privacy page, and maybe a unique header that you've gotten from Fiverr. As far as content, I would say you can go ahead and start building out uh, links once you have maybe five articles on there, and that's enough to get moving. Okay. Any particular source you like for the articles? Do you write them yourselves, or do you get them off Fiverr or Content Authority or someplace like that? I usually go to um, Odesk and just hire someone for you know five articles or so. I, I typically try and find someone who's just getting started on Odesk so their their rates aren't too high. Okay. And um, it's t- when I first started, I definitely wrote the articles myself to keep the cost down. As we as we mentioned, it's hard to put an ROI in it. Yeah. Um, so it's you know it's nice to just keep the budget low when you're getting started. Okay. But that makes sense. So yeah, you're, you're at, say it was a hundred dollars per domain just to buy it. And now maybe another 50, 70 bucks for content, I guess, you know, getting it in, in a presentable shape. Right. And are, is one of those articles, your like linking article or do they all link back to your, to your niche site or how does that work? Typically I have uh, just one to two articles linking to the money site and you know, a PBN becomes exponentially more valuable the more money sites that you have because you could link out to multiple money sites from one PBN domain. Okay. So 
Um, but to directly answer your question, uh, you only get a certain amount of value linking out from a particular domain. And then after that, it's uh, diminishing returns. So I recommend just you know one article link out to your money site. Now, within that article, I recommend two outbound links to your money site. So maybe one to the homepage and then one to a particular post that you're trying to rank. Okay, so this is where you kind of get into these, um, you know, quote, public uh, private blog networks um, that, you know, the John Havers and the dispenser have one too, like um, where they're... Yes, that's right. He's partnered with uh, Hayden Miyamoto okay. at No Hat and they have a Rank Hero that they run. Okay, where they're selling access and it's, you know, it's several hundred bucks a month. I was looking at it one time and... And so it's like, hey, hey, we've built the network and now we can basically sell links from it for, you know, 200, 300, 400 dollars a month, whatever it is. Because like you said, we we have the, the sites with the authority and now, you know, adding in an extra article or an extra, you know, link out isn't going to necessarily hurt us. What's your take on these like public ones where it's like, is it, is it worth it to just pay pay them a hand, pay their pay them their monthly fee? And go about it that way or trying to build one on your own? I think a combination of the, the two, and it obviously depends on your goals and your budget that I, you know, I keep referring to, but um, you know, outsourcing you know, this aspect is a great idea, uh, particularly if, you're, if your website is already making money and you have some cash flow. So you know, the links from Rank Hero, uh, places like Lightning Rank and Rank Source, those are probably going to be higher quality, higher authority than you would probably be able to build on your own, at least starting out. So I think it's you know a pretty good idea to outsource a few of these and use those services. Okay. Um, that said, if you know once you get rolling and you have a couple links from those services, it's definitely cheaper in the long run to go ahead and. Um, build your own network. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. This seems, I mean, it just seems really, really risky that, you know, Google has the $400, right? They can log in and see these domains potentially and just like shut the whole thing down. Right. And then, then, then everybody gets nuked. Right. Yeah. They're, they're very smart there. I, I've uh, mentioned that kind of example <laughs> before. So yeah, I mean, technically one would think if they just, you know, purchased a few links over time, the PhD should be able to, uh, you know, recreate the network and figure out, you know, what's out there. Now, I'm pretty sure that's what happened back in the day before I got involved in SEO or any sort of online presence um, with, I guess, it was Build My Rank back then. Do, do you remember that, Nick? Or no? Okay. <laughs> well, there were uh, there were a couple a couple big services where they were, I guess, quite public with, in the whole matter. And they were totally shut down and, and de-indexed at that point. Yeah, that's uh, that's some scary stuff. So there's that's like the the balance between look, this sounds this sounds awesome, this sounds fantastic. I guess we should t- touch on the the results of this. Like, what's the I guess what's the end goal? So you've got the the five you know the five different sites all with you know an article pointing back to your money site. Now, you know what's the yeah, I guess you can get it. You can get a site that otherwise wouldn't wouldn't be on Google's radar ranking very quickly. Is that correct? Exactly. So there there are a, several case studies out there, and if in particular, if you go to the services that we mentioned before, they have nice graphs where you can see you know the impact of adding five links from high authority domains, and you simply see the the website shoot up in rank. And of course, there's many factors involved. It depends on the niche. It depends on where your site's ranked already and you know some other on-site factors. However, the impact is dramatic. And I think that's why places like Rank Hero, Rank Lightning, and Rank Source, uh, they do such a, a great job uh, you know, moving sites up and that's how they're able to continue to grow. Now, is there a kind of in between phase where it's like, Hey, I don't necessarily want to be on one of these, you know, public, public PBNs and I don't necessarily want to do it myself. Is there a, is there like a done for you model where it's like, you can just outsource the whole thing? There are, uh, there are a couple people doing that. So I, I mentioned, uh, John Haver before, 
and uh, Lewis Ogden over at Cloud Income. They have, I think, it, on a small scale, they do have a you know build out service that they'll they'll take care of these for you. I don't know about pricing on those. Okay. It's obviously much cheaper to build it on your own. However, if time is a premium and you have more money than time, it's probably a really good option to outsource having one of these networks created. Okay. Yeah. If you found if you found the niche or you have the the niche site built out and you're just not seeing any momentum on it, um, you maybe that's when it's time to to look at some of these different uh, different alternatives. So what else? What else do people need to need to know to get started with this? Well, let's see. Uh, you know, we covered the risks, and that's that's definitely important. Um, in particular, uh, with the monetary investment that's involved here. The other thing is, you know, the time. So. You do get more efficient as you're building these out, but I would say maybe from start to finish, a uh, single domain from you know purchasing the domain, taking care of the hosting, outsourcing, right, you know, writing the content and building out the site, it's probably going to take you you know five to six hours. So that's something to think about as well. Right. Yeah. Within you know, if you've got limited time, maybe an hour or two a day, I mean, it's it's not unrealistic to say you could have your network pretty much built out like within, you know, a couple months though. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, awesome, Doug. Thanks so much for, for coming on the show. Is there, I guess, any, any parting words of guidance for aspiring, um, you know, network, um, moguls here? Anyone that is thinking about taking action and, you know, starting a side hustle, do it as soon as possible. Start today. Um, I wish I would have started sooner, but, you know, I've listened to many of your shows, Nick, and it's a theme across the board. It is. Uh, it's, it's never, you know, a good time to start. Um, there's always some excuse to wait a little bit longer, but the time's never quite right. So you're better off just getting started. You could adjust along the way and, you know, don't give up. Success will come your way. I love it. I love it, Doug. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's nichesiteproject.com and your inside guide or insider gift at nichesiteproject.com slash side hustle. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Nick. This episode of the Side Hustle Show is brought to you by Ting, T-I-N-G. Earlier this year, my wife and I switched our cell phone provider from Verizon over to Ting, and we are really excited about the switch because our monthly bill is less than half of what it was, which means we're going to save over $800 this year. Ting operates on the Sprint network, so you can bring over any Sprint-enabled device, and that meant we were able to keep our beloved iPhones and keep our same phone numbers. So if you visit SideHustleNation.com slash Ting, you'll get a $25 credit towards your four, towards your first month of service or towards your new device. And if you're still under contract, they'll even pay up to $75 of your early termination fee to incentivize the switch. Again, that's SideHustleNation.com slash Ting for your first for your free $25 sign-up credit. And one thing we didn't really touch on <laughs> was building a PBN as a side hustle opportunity in that you can build this network and sell links from it like some other SEO experts are doing. I think this certainly qualifies as potentially gray hat SEO, but as long as all parties understand the risk and reward involved, I don't really have a problem with it. In fact, you can, if you can use the tactics we talked about today to build out a high powered network, you could conceivably command a couple hundred dollars or more for links from your network. So, not a bad side hustle and a really fast way to recoup your initial investment. Um, so, for the inside scoop on everything we talked about, visit the show description in your podcast app or sidehustlenation.com slash episode 69 and download the free PDF guide. Now, Doug has also put together a full-scale course on this topic, which you can find the details of in the show notes. And as a special bonus, if you choose to buy the course through my affiliate link, I'll do a private content and conversion audit of the website of your choice. Just email me, uh, just send me your receipt to nick at sidehustlenation.com, and we'll get that one on the books. And that's it for the show. Until next time, go out there, make something happen, and I'll see you next week in episode 70. I've got one of my most popular guests coming back on the show to talk about a completely different angle on his business. You won't want to miss it. 
Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com.